new female students. Hello and thank you very much for inviting us down here to see you in Oxford and these beautiful surroundings. Some of you may know me from conferences because I have put on an active and uh, widely supported set of conferences and two panels at a conference over the years. Uh, and some of you don't know me, so a little bit of background. My father travelled from India, I think the family thought that everything would go downhill after Indian independence, go to the motherland. So he travelled on his own and ended up working in the docks in London as a clerk in a little booth, I think, along the docks. He met my mother, who had left Ireland, 23 years old, sharing a bedroom with five little brothers, not much independence. They'd forgotten to persuade her to do Latin at school, so instead of being able to go off to university, when she did so well with her exams, she said, look, I can't do it in six weeks, I'll go off to the technical college. Came over to London and got work very easily. Three friends came over, they stayed in a hostel in Gunn Street, and they all got work in the banks, because Irish girls could be paid a lot less. She met my father at an unsuitable party in the East End of London, and the two of them were drawn together through their shared religion, Catholicism. Um, it wasn't really enough to keep them together for very long. She was a sensitive woman, intelligent woman, independent-minded woman, and that marriage wasn't really going to last. And when it became unsafe, because we were living in a country that had a welfare state, it meant that she could make that decision to divorce at a time where it was not easy and to raise her two little girls, me and my younger sister, she's likely to me by two centimetres and she'll tell you that. Uh, and for a few years we had that bit of welfare support while we were at primary school. As soon as my sister was in full time to stay school, my mother could go off and train for a career. She became a teacher. 36 years old, she went off to train. Um, and I would want to fight for that welfare state, and that welfare state is being destroyed by this government. 85% of the cuts that are yet to be made in this country, and I don't think any of us can imagine what that will be like. I was on a delegation to Athens earlier in the year. I met with Alexis Tsipras. I met with MP Sophia Sakharafa, who left PASOK to join him in Syriza. And they were saying how the Greek people felt like the lab rats of Europe, that whatever the Troika, the EU and the IMF could do to them by cuts, by insisting that on bailout agreements that would impoverish the majority of the ordinary people in Greece, they, that whatever they could get away with there in Greece, that they would try to roll out elsewhere across Europe. Well, with our deficit here, this is what our... Tory government and with their Lib Dem, uh, Liberal Democrat allies in a coalition are doing to our country and I will fight for that. But I didn't find the Green Party until the third anti-war demo. I was there on the first one on that cold February morning with my three little children, with the bubbles, with the packed lunches and the little treats and the mittens and the hats and gloves and holding up to say, that's Tony Benn there on the screen, wondering if they'd ever see him again, not knowing that now he is the president of the Coalition of Resistance, and for the second year in a row, I have been elected as the chair of the Coalition of Resistance. Everybody knows that I am green, and they want green at the heart of the anti-austerity movement, anti-austerity and anti-privatisation. And as things become more urgent, as the Arctic ice melts, as we find that not only is it not really maybe worth talking about peak oil anymore because of the 100% of the fossil fuels that have already been identified around the world that are on the asset sheets as wealth for the many companies around the world, we dare not burn more than 20% of that if we are to keep within our two degree target. That is very, very urgent business. Now, I believe that the Green Party, with our fantastic policies, and I read the manifesto before I signed up, because I wasn't sure what might be dodgy about you, and I thought, I thought all of that myself. I'm joining. I believe we should be at the heart of the battle against austerity, against privatisation, and against ecological vandalism, and I believe that we could drive our way into the proper political argument that places us where there is no proper opposition today. And that will swell our membership. Target to win has to carry on. I was elected on target to win. Uh, I'm 
I'm standing with Will Duckworth. He was elected on target to win with a new Metalist Midlands model. Keep that going. But at the same time, we have to build our campaigning. That's what will get us electoral success. Otherwise, in the next 99 years, we'll have, what, 450 councillors and no power in government. We need a big drive to change the mood of the nation.